Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we will cover how motor unit recruitment influences hypertrophy training. First, let's establish what the principle of motor unit recruitment is. Our muscles are made up of many muscle fibers, and these muscle fibers somewhat contract independently from one another. This is because a group of fibers are innervated by a specific motor neuron. So each muscle has many motor neurons that innervate a certain number of muscle fibers. We call the motor neuron and the muscle fibers that it innervates a single motor unit. However, each motor neuron innervates different types of muscle fibers, meaning that some innervate larger and stronger fibers, usually called fast twitch muscle fibers, while others innervate the smaller and weaker fibers, usually called slow twitch muscle fibers. This leads us to the size principle. The size principle suggests that motor units are recruited based on the force requirements of the exercise. So if force demands are low, then only the smaller, weaker muscle fibers are required. But if force demands are higher, the slow twitch fibers can't produce enough force to perform the exercise alone, so the fast twitch fibers will also be recruited. It should also be understood that the slow twitch fibers are always recruited first, and if they can't produce enough force alone, then the fast twitch fibers are recruited in addition to the smaller and weaker fibers. So the size principle is basically a scale. The higher the force demands of a task, the more muscle fibers that will be involved. Next, let's discuss fatigue and how this may influence motor unit recruitment. As we mentioned, if a task has low force demands, then only the slow twitch fibers will be recruited. However, if we continue to perform the same low force task for an extended period of time, then eventually these fibers start to fatigue and can no longer perform the task alone. At this point, higher threshold motor units kick in to assist with the exercise. Once these fatigue, even higher threshold motor units are recruited until all the motor units are working to perform the task. So as fatigue increases, motor unit recruitment also increases. So what does all this mean when we apply it to hypertrophy training? Well, essentially this means that when we lift a heavier load, more motor units are recruited since force demands are higher. If we lift lighter loads, only the low threshold motor units will be recruited initially since force demands are lower. It also means that the closer to failure we get, the more muscle fibers that will be recruited to lift the weight. This has an influence on how close we take each set to failure. When lifting in the lower hypertrophy rep ranges, we probably don't need to take each set to failure to maximize motor unit recruitment. Practically, this means that when we lift in the 6 to 12 rep range, we probably only need to lift around 1 to 2 reps before failure to maximize hypertrophy adaptations. This is because the loads are heavier, and all motor units will probably be recruited basically from the start of the set. So all muscle fibers will be taxed and receive a hypertrophy stimulus. However, when lifting lighter loads, we need to take each set closer to failure to ensure the highest threshold motor units are recruited and trained. Practically, this means that when we lift in the 12 to 20 plus rep range, we should take each set around 0 to 1 reps before failure to ensure every single motor unit is recruited and trained. If we don't take light loads close enough to failure, we will only train the low threshold motor units and never fully exhaust the fast twitch muscle fibers. This will simply result in less hypertrophy per set. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.